The Premier of Northwest Territories is in Toronto this week making a pitch for investment in his region. He points to the effects of climate change. Ice is melting. Shipping lanes are opening up. The Premier says now is the time for Canada to build a significant presence in the Arctic before other countries skate to the, stake their claims. So what would an increased presence look like? Bob McLeod is the Premier of the Northwest Territories, and he joins us from Toronto. Uh, Premier, you've said that Canada is complacent about establishing a serious presence in the Arctic compared to countries like Russia and China. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I talked about the changing uh, geopolitics in the Arctic, the fact that uh, with the climate change affecting the ice and other changing conditions in the Arctic, the fact that uh, Russia, for example, is uh, going full force in uh, developing their northern sea route. They have uh, 20 icebreakers and at least uh, seven ports in the Arctic. Uh, China has uh, an Arctic policy. They're building a nuclear icebreaker and uh, they are very interested in uh, the Arctic. Similarly, the United States uh, has announced uh, an, uh, that they're building an icebreaker that, uh, and they made statements at a recent uh, Arctic Council meeting where they questioned uh, whether uh, the Northwest Passage is internal waters uh, for Canada and there's, they stated that it should be the international waters. So uh, we uh, are wondering whether Canada has done enough to make sure that we can maintain our Arctic sovereignty in this important part of Canada. So what, are, what fear or concern do you have if Canada can't keep up with those countries? Well, I mean, uh, there's been a number of countries that have submitted uh, claims uh, to the Arctic uh, through the United Nations uh, Law of the Sea process. And uh, we've always said that the best way to maintain Arctic sovereignty is to have uh, people live there, that we, we uh, live in the Arctic and uh, to have strong, healthy communities is the best way to show Arctic sovereignty. And our, our economy has uh, been having a tough time. Uh, we need to uh, find ways to continue to create uh, jobs and business opportunities. And we see an opportunity now with uh, the fact that the ice is melting, the surface, there's less surface ice. The Northwest Passage is open for much longer periods of time and, then, and we see an opportunity to, to transform our economy so that we have an international uh, center for air and marine transportation. And you know, we have a lot of ideas uh, about how to do that, including creating an economic free zone in, in the Northwest Territories and other parts of the Arctic. So if I understand correctly, your argument here is if, if the, the, the northern economy isn't developed, that Arctic sovereignty is at risk here. Is that sort of the argument you're trying to make here? Well, that, and we're using that premise for, for further development and for strategic investments in both infrastructure and other uh, opportunities to develop our economy over a 10-year period. So what, what do you want to see? Is there something specific you want to see from the federal government? Oh, well, I, I have a, a very long list of things that we want, uh, starting off with, uh, uh, you know, I'd like to see at least uh, three icebreakers, uh, at least three ports. I'd like to see a much uh, increased military presence in, in the north. We want a, a northern immigration policy so that we can, you know, the Northwest Territories is the only jurisdiction in Canada whose population has been declining for the past uh, 10 years or so. And uh, so we'd like to see a, a northern immigration uh, policy. We want to develop a university uh, polytechnique for the, for the north. Uh, we think that uh, we should significantly increase the research capacity in, in the Arctic. Uh, we could either have a floating research center on an icebreaker or we could uh, build uh, more research centers so that we could become centers of excellence in climate change research and permafrost, Arctic cartography, Arctic mining, Arctic transportation and, and building systems. And uh, we also want to see development of a civil servant 
or a southern exchange where more people from the south can can come and experience the north for themselves because climate change is already in the Arctic and uh, our emissions are insignificant and we see this largely as a problem caused by southern Canadians and other international country, countries. One of the things you mentioned in that list that you'd like from the federal government is that you want to see a bigger military presence uh, in the Northwest Territory, starting with a base with about 5,000 people. Why do you need that? Well, I think uh, the fact that uh, the superpowers like Russia and China are very interested in the Arctic. Similarly, the United States has said it should be international waters. I think that uh, with the, uh, the military, I think, is perfectly suited to uh, operate in the Arctic. They've shown they can operate on a year-round basis, and I think that with the necessary equipment that it would, uh, it would be beneficial for all of us. So uh, you also mentioned climate change and you acknowledge that the Northwest Passage is open for longer periods and, and, you, and you want to, you know, spur development in, in, your, in your region. Um, but with that climate change, you, you know, with those plans that you want to develop more and you want to build and grow the economy and, and, and grow in other ways, uh, does more need to be done to acknowledge what's going on in terms of climate change in your plan? Well, certainly, I think... Uh we're doing our part. Uh, I think uh, Southern Canada should uh, be doing a lot more in, uh, because of the fact that uh, uh, even if we meet the Paris climate change targets, uh, I don't think it's going to uh, do very much to reverse the impacts of it already. So I think that that's why we're saying you know, we need to do a, a much better job educating people in the South uh, on what is happening, how climate change affects us on a, on a daily basis in, in the north and in the Arctic, which most southern Canadians don't see it on a, on a daily basis like we do. If there's one image you want Canadians who live in the southern part of the country to, to sort of think of when it comes to climate change that, that you experience on a daily basis, what would that image be? Paint us a picture. Well, I mean, there's, there's lots. Uh, I guess the, the best picture would be the fact that, you know, we live on top of permafrost, both continuous and discontinuous permafrost, and we see it melting every day. So like uh, we depend, uh, in Yellowknife where I live, we depend on uh, hydroelectricity. And uh, two years ago, for two years, uh, the reservoirs didn't replenish themselves at all. So we had to fire up all of the electrical or diesel generators to, to generate power for our, to heat our houses and to power our houses and also it's really impacting on on wildlife and uh, you know we're seeing uh, water warming up and species of fish are being affected we're, we're seeing uh, animals that are moving north that are not uh, we've never seen before such as cougars white-tailed deer we're seeing the tree line moving further north uh, the Beaufort Sea used to be ice-free five weeks a year. Now it's ice-free uh, at least 20 weeks a year, resulting in larger storms and um, a lot more coastal erosion. Uh, it's affecting our caribou populations, which we're seeing herds declining significantly, like the Bathurst caribou herd declined from, used to be about 800,000 20 years ago. Now they're around six to 8,000, uh, you know, so it's affecting us uh, significantly. Premier, I want to thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Katie. That is the Premier of Northwest Territories, Bob McLeod. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.